بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا لیکچر سیریز آن انٹرنیٹ ورکنگ ود لینکس ان دا پریویس سیشن وی لرن ٹو یوز دا ڈی ایچ سی پی سروس وی کنفگرڈ اٹ آن آر پی ٹی سی ایل براڈ بینڈ راؤٹر ایز ویل ایز انسٹالڈ اینڈ کنفگرڈ اٹ آن دا یوبن ٹو سرور مشین Right now the three machines in our lab environment are running and all three are getting their TCP IP configuration parameters from the PTCL broadband router. With Ubuntu server, having the IP address of 192.168.1.100. Kali Linux having the IP address of 192.168.1.101 and Microsoft Windows on 192.168.1.102 Right, in today's session we are going to talk about the Telnet server <coughs> Excuse me Well, students, Telnet stands for Tele-Type Network. It is an application layer protocol that can be used on the local area network or on the internet as a remote login facility. Telnet provides a bi-directional, interactive, and text-oriented communication. It was developed in 1969, and so it predates TCP IP. Telnet transmits all the data, including the passwords, in clear over the network. That is, no encryption is done while you are using Telnet. In fact, it is very easily exploitable, and all the traffic can be intercepted by the man in the middle attack. So, due to these serious security concerns, the use of Telnet has been replaced by Secure Shell Server. We are doing Telnet just from a service perspective. And inshallah, in the next session, we will be shifting to the secure shell for remote login. Let us start playing. Right now, I am on the Ubuntu server machine. The host name is this. Who am I? Of course, I am root. Let me first install telnet daemon by apt-get install. Telnet D. Well, it is already the newest version. Let me also install a daemon called Zynet D. For the Telnet to work, we also need to install Extended Internet Services daemon. Let me man it. Well, students, Zynet T has replaced the old internet daemon called the iNet T. It is also known as Super Server. Instead of having a service like Telnet D started at system initialization time and be dormant until a connection request arrives, Zynet T is the only daemon process started. So when a request comes in, Zynet D starts the appropriate service. Please go through this man page at time of your convenience. Let me see the services file at C services and let me grab Zynet D. X I N E T D Zynet D. You can see Zynet D uh, is a TCP service which will run on 9098 port number. Let me see Telnet as well in the at C services file. You can see Telnet, sorry, Telnet runs on port 23. There are other versions of Telnet which are secure. Well, to check out what all services are managed by Zynet D, let me ls the directory at C Zynet D dot D. Inside this directory, you can see the configuration files of all those services which are managed by Zynet D. Remember, Zynet D is not limited to services listed in the at services file only. 
one can always use Dynety to start any special purpose server, which he has written himself. Since right now we are only concerned about the Telnet service, so let us open the configuration file specific to this Telnet service. Let me vim at c zynet.d and inside this directory let me open the file telnet. This is a very self-explanatory configuration file. The first option is disable is equal to no. If you want to disable telnet which you should if you are working on on a machine which is having a public IP address and you don't want that no one should be able to telnet it so you should write a yes over here similarly there are uh, other configuration parameters as well weight is equal to no means uh, it is multi-threaded if you put on a yes over here that means it is single threaded and finally uh, this line is important which is commented only from this IP if you want that only specific machines should be able to access this telnet server you can write the IP of those machines over here and if you want that some specific machines should not be able to access this telnet service you should write their IP addresses on this line which is right in front of you okay uh, let's keep the default configuration and let me let me open another file at c .conf. this is a global zynet d configuration file it contains general configuration settings which affect every service that is under zynet d control you can see this file it contains a lot of parameters like instances is equal to 60 this is the maximum number of requests Zynet-D can handle at once then there are uh, certain parameters related to what all information should be logged in inside the log files on a successful or on a failed login attempt this parameter CPS is equal to 25 space 30 this means allow no more than 25 connections per second to any given service and if this limit is reached the service is retired for 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 this much number of seconds that is 30 seconds let's keep this configuration default and let me check the status of Zynet-D SOS TEMCTL status sign a T. You can see this service is running. If it is not running, you can start or stop it. We have seen the use of system CTL in, in the previous session. Well, now uh, the Telnet service is running under the supervision of sign a D on this machine, Ubuntu server. Let us try to connect from, from a Kali machine. Let me do telnet and the IP of the Ubuntu server 192.168.1.100. It prompts me for a username. Let me give Kakamena and the password. And you see, I am on that machine. Remember, I need to give the credential of a user who exists on the Ubuntu server machine. These credentials which I gave over here are compared with the atc passwd and atc shadow file over there and if a match exists a login session is created. Now whatever I type over here it goes character by character to Ubuntu server it is executed over there if it is a command and the output is sent to me. You see if I give the command if config you get the output as 192.168.1.100 which is the IP address of the Ubuntu server let me exit from this session let me move on to my Windows machine and try to telnet the Ubuntu server you can use a potty 
course you can use the command telnet.exe and in front of it you need to give the IP address of Ubuntu server it prompts you for the username Kakamana and the password and there you go again I have successfully logged in from my Windows machine to the Ubuntu server as Kakamana let me exit let us do one more thing before we close and see how telnet is insecure what I have said in the beginning okay let me run run a packet sniffer Wireshark Wireshark is a pet packet sniffer that captures uh, network packets in real time and display them in human readable format let me select the interface ETH0 and let me come on to another terminal over here on the Kali machine and let me do telnet 192.168.1.100 let me give the user kakamana and the password which is PUCAT I have logged in if I come over here on the other terminal let me shrink this yes over, over here or the Wireshark you can see a lot of uh, activity is going on let me stop the capturing of the packets you can see there are three panes one two and three the pane over here in which the cursor is moving right now this is the packet listing window it displays a one line summary for each packet that is captured for example over here you can see this is the time at which this packet was captured the source the destination the protocol the length and the information once you select a packet in the packet listing window in the middle window you can you can see the details of those packet this is the packet header detail window it contains uh, the details of the selected packet you can see the details of the, the headers that different layers of TCP IP stack has attached to this packet for example uh, let me expand the internet protocol and over here you can see along with a lot of information the source and the destination address since this is a telnet packet source is the Kali machine 192.168.1.101 and the destination is of course the address of the Ubuntu server uh, okay right let me shrink it the third window over here is known as the packet content window this displays the contents of the captured frame in both hexadecimal and ASCII format okay over here they, 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 this is uh, uh, a filter field packet display filter field let me write down Telnet over here. Now you can see the captured packets are only of the Telnet protocol. Now try to understand. I am right now on the first line of this, in which the source is 101 and the destination is 100. Let me open uh, this portion and let me move down line by line packet by packet you can see uh, the connection is being established various information like the window size echoing properties are sent to to the server machine and finally uh, this is the data that has been sent by by the server to the client from 100 to 101 that is Ubuntu server login prompt and this is from 101 to 100 now I am writing the username over here Kakamana you can see K A K A M A N N and A Kakamana so this Kakamana has gone in clear uh, from the Kali Linux to the Ubuntu server now there is a 
carriage return a new line now the Ubuntu server 100 is asking 101 about the password let's move down you see P U C I and T P U C I T this is the password which has been sent in clear so anyone sitting in the middle of these two machines on the network can get hold of your credentials and hack your account so never use telnet for remote login rather always prefer a secure facility like secure shell on which we will talk about inshallah in our next session right students we are done with telnet server i hope it was informative for you all if you have liked it please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends happy learning and allah hafiz